After trying everything in the book of science, I decided I need to get schooled in some chemistry. So with a fresh breath and a new change of clothes, I'm off to visit Brandon Zoris, the chemist guru. Brandon is a graduate from the University of Toronto with a degree in biochemistry. He has studied the Diet Coke and Mentos craze and knows exactly how to turn my experiment in the right direction. Well, when pop is formed, uh, CO2 is pumped in at high pressure and this is stored in the pop bottle. And so when the Mentos is injected, it causes this release of pressure. It appears smooth, but if you're getting a really close up view of the Mentos, say like that small, actually if we blew it up, you'd actually see little surface pores all around the Mentos. And these are actually the perfect sites for the CO2 gas to form and actually expand in the pop. Well, like anything uh, in your body, the higher the surface area, the more absorption that can happen. So with one Mentos, we have a great amount of surface area, but if we get a whole pack into the explosion, we can have a lot of uh, sites where the CO2 bubbles can form. We can get a bottle of pop and construct a mechanism that can launch as many Mentos as possible in, like our dropper. We're putting a stake in there with all the Mentos lined up and ready to go. As soon as we pull this, they're going to all fall in, and this reaction is going to take place over a whole pack of Mentos. We're going to have a greater explosion. So as soon as that pin is popped out, the Mentos are going to fall in, and they're going to cause this reaction to take place in here, and all the Mentos are actually going to come shooting straight up. Diet Coke works best because regular Coke actually has a lot of sugar. Most cans of pop have about 42 grams of sugar, and basically if you're having a Diet Coke, that doesn't have any. It contains aspartame, and the sugar, what that is, it's really sticky. It wants to hold the CO2 in. And so if you have a Diet Coke, it's less sticky, it's less mess to clean up, and actually it allows for a bigger eruption. You're going to need some paper for the tube. You can use newspaper, an old magazine, or any type of Bristol board. You're going to need some tape to reinforce the sides, and you're going to need something that holds the Mentos into place. A pencil, straw, coffee store, shish kebab, stick, anything will work. What you're going to do, you're going to roll the paper up to the same size as a Mentos packet. Then all you're going to do is you're going to take some tape to reinforce the sides. You can chop the top off so that you don't need to put that many Mentos in. And very carefully you're going to put a hole through both sides. You're then you can use anything like this, a skewer, pencil, straw, or coffee stirrer to put it through. This is going to prevent the Mentos from falling out before you want. This is going to allow the Mentos to go through as soon as you pull this out. So with a little help from Dr. Pepper, I am well on my way to carbonated success. I head back to the lob zone to attempt, yet again, a successful explosion. Let's see how it turns out. guys so it looked like the mentos experiment worked we wasted a lot of coke today but i guess we finally figured out why the diet coke and mentos explosions are so popular well this is justin zoris i'm signing out from centennial college and hey what do you know one minute left now back to the studio just for your information no mentos were harmed during the making of that segment Anyways, as we're going to be slowly winding things down to our end of the show, we're going to put a cap on today's events, and we're going to take a look at people who are less fortunate than us. Tyler LeMage brings us some stories on some of the homeless people living in Toronto. Let's hear their stories. Toronto, Ontario, Canada, home to more than 2 million citizens. 
It's a big, beautiful city full of all kinds of culture. It does, however, have its dark side. There's an estimated 5,000 homeless people living in Toronto right now. Uh, we're sitting here at Queen and University with Daryl. Yeah. How are you doing today, Daryl? Oh, not too bad, thanks. And how are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. It's a beautiful day out here. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. I'm catching a nice tan here. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, um, you're homeless? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. Uh, sometimes we do uh, make mistakes in life, and that's why we're here, uh, you know? I am working with um, an organization called Streets to Homes to get off the streets now. Oh, good for you. Good Thank for you. you. How long have you been homeless for? Uh, on and off for about 15 years. Wow. Yes. The longest run on the streets, five years. 365 days a year. Wow. So what were you doing uh, 15 years ago? 15 years ago, well, um, got married, got divorced, then they hit the streets. Uh, that's when they actually had squeegeeing. Okay, right. So if you remember the squeegeeing and... Yeah. Back then, yeah, it was all right. It wasn't so bad being on the streets back then. Now it's a it's a whole lot tougher. It's a, a new act on the streets now. So you just sit here and you spare change and spare change, make stupid little comments like spare <laughs> some change for uh, the circumcision of uh, my goldfish. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stupid stupid stuff like that, you know, just to make people laugh, to make them think, you know. And sometimes it brings people back, and uh, they might give you a little more than what they were already going to give you. I find that uh, people who put on a little gimmick tend to get a little bit more money yeah, than people. It, it, exactly. It, it all depends what you do. Like, uh, right now, there's a guy over across the street. He's playing music. That's how he makes his money. So, it, like, everyone out here has a different way of making their money. Right, exactly. Do you, do you do okay with the money you make? Um, but today, really lousy, actually. <laughs> it's just because it's so congested down here right now. Right. It's like more or less being on the 401. Are, are you going to go out to the 401 and ask for change? Yeah. <laughs> Especially right. when it's jam-packed. Yeah. Might be easy, but you're going to get hurt real quick. <laughs> so um, do, you, do you try to find work? or? Yeah. It's something I run over by a truck a year ago. My feet are pretty messed up. I can't really work right now. How did you get run over by a truck? Sleepy on a heat grate. Truck took a shortcut, came along Richmond, turned left on Shepard, came right over the sidewalk, crushed both my feet. It's horrible, man. So you were sleeping on one of these things? Yeah. Okay, so why do, why do you sleep on these? They warm in the winter. They're nice and hot, as you can tell. <laughs> and that, that that keeps you warm, your entire body? It keeps me pretty warm all winter. We're at uh, the corner of Bay and Dundas here. What's your name, sir? Oh. How are you doing today? All right. So you're homeless. How long have you been homeless for? Since December. Everybody we've been talking to today, some one guy was 15 years. Yeah, so what were you doing before December? I was living in a Habitat housing home at Shooter and Sherburne. I was living at the Salvation Army before that. Uh, housing worker there had uh, found me a place there, but I got in trouble there, and uh, I got kicked out and evicted, and... Uh, I haven't been able to find a place since because I, I don't know, I can't seem to afford the rents. It's, the rent here is a very expensive, you know. Do you work? No, yeah, I'm on disability. What are you on disability for? A uh, car accident. When was the car accident? I was 16. Really? Yeah. Did you have a, a, a job prior to that? Yeah, I did. I was working. I was going to school. Yeah. Where were you going to school? In Barry. Oh, yeah? In Barry. Yeah. For what? Um, just high school, high oh, school okay. credits. Yeah. Do you, do you blame the, the car accident? Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. So, uh, where, where, do you sleep on the streets? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, how, how? I had uh, a rude awakening this morning by the police because they found me sleeping out on Young Street this morning. And do you get by, would you say, by the spare changing? Yeah. Yeah, you do okay. I go to drop-ins and stuff too during the day. Places where I can go make phone calls and stuff, you know. This is Tyler Lamech reporting for Centennial College's The Journal.